Ever since the existence of humans, there has been the existence of fashion. Today, it is a trend in itself to talk about the crazy fashion of the 2020s. From wavy eyebrows to underwear with tights, there is no shortage of bizarre fashion trends in the modern era, and the rise of social media hasn't helped. Although we love to express our opinions on micro trends and which ones do and do not pass the vibe check, I couldn't help but wonder if our fashion experimentation is a symptom of the rise of social media and fast fashion, or if it is simply human nature to wear things that are highly questionable and utterly impractical. This is why today I decided to take a look back through time to try and see if there have always been outrageous fashion trends, and spoiler alert, there has. Hello, my name is Harmony Kawaii, and today we're going to be talking about some of the craziest fashion trends throughout history and their lore, because let me tell you, there's a lot of drama surrounding the fashion industry, and there always has been, I guess. So let's get into it. The first trend we are going to be talking about today all started in 19th century Wales and was originated by the Princess Alexandra of Denmark. Alexandra was highly revered for being a fashion icon. She was the original influencer, and it wasn't without reason. You know, she took pride in her outfits. She had a passion for fashion. For instance, Alexandra had a scar on her neck that she was insecure about, so to hide it, she would wear chokers. And not long after she started wearing chokers, all the girls started wearing chokers, and it spread like wildfire, and then chokers were it. But chokers are not what we are going to be talking about today. That would be boring. Nobody cares about people wearing chokers like okay and that's like that's not that crazy the reason we are gathered here today is because miss alexandra started one of the most bizarre trends in all of history the bizarre trend that made her infamous all started because one day she fell very ill she was seen by a doctor and her illness was diagnosed to be a rheumatic fever this rheumatic fever left her with a permanent limp Due to this, she started using a walking stick because of her new disability. The ladies of London saw this and they said, yes, yes, yes. It was new, it was fresh, it was giving dainty. Women started faking limps and it actually became so serious that women would wear two different types of shoes. So they would go in their closet and they would wear mismatching shoes. They would say, oh, okay, I'm gonna take this shoe and this, sh this shoe because they have different heights and it will make it easier for me to simulate a limp. <laughs> As this trend's popularity increased, so did an untapped market that shoemakers quickly took the opportunity in. Wealthy women faking limps? <laughs> Sign me up! So shoekeepers started making pairs of shoes where one was heeled and one was flat to make it easier for these wealthy women to be limping around town. This trend was so popular among the wealthy, but commoners thought it was the dumbest thing they've ever seen. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> I think the moral of this story is that wealthy people will always do the dumbest things in the name of fashion, or just to separate themselves from the poor. <laughs> Either one, who knows. Speaking of separating yourself from the poor, <laughs> let's talk about the next crime against fashion, shall we? Chopines, or choppings. I don't know, it didn't, it, it depended where I looked, how it was pronounced, so I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna say choppings because I like it better than chopines. Something about chopines just sounds wrong. Like, I, it just doesn't sound, like, I just don't like it. So I'm gonna say choppings, okay? Choppings. Back in 16th century Spain and Italy, something evil was brewing among the upper class elites. <laughs> Choppings were basically platforms that had no padding and were typically made from cork or wood. Wood. This fashion trend was one that solely was meant to display wealth and status. The higher the chopines, the higher that wealth and status. Now, how they were styled depended on what region you were in. So in Spain, it was 
procedure to wear a shorter dress that showed off your chopines. But in Italy, it was completely inappropriate to show your shoes. So they would actually wear really long dresses to cover their shoes and it would make them just look extremely tall and like they had extremely long legs. Now these shoes, I'm not just talking about them because they were goofy looking, okay? That's not the sole purpose of why I'm talking about them. These shoes were also dramatically difficult to walk in. So the women who wore them would have to walk really slow and they weren't even able to walk by themselves. So they would require the assistance of servants to help them walk. <laughs> These servants would have to help them keep their balance as they walked along wherever they needed to go. And this was actually a part of the display with Chopin's. It was a part of the look. It's like, hey, look, I have servants. I don't even need to be able to walk. I don't need to be able to do anything. I live a life of leisure and I don't even need to walk by myself. Like, I have servants for that. You don't? <laughs> Get your money up. This shoe did not come without its controversies, okay? Men were mad. Men were like, why do we need to buy these dramatically expensive shoes. I hate this. You can barely even walk in them. Um, it makes no sense. And on top of that, we also have to pay for extra dress fabric, which is not cheap. Um, and because I... But of course, the dress fabric thing is only if you lived in Italy, but they were like, what the hell? The Italian men were pissed. They were mad. They were suing. They were suing. Now... <laughs> These shoes started to get dramatically tall because they were essentially a way to flex, you know? It was flex culture. It was running amok. It was going crazy. Flex culture was on the rise. And so the shoes started getting really tall, like really tall. And people started getting really injured. Like it was a health and safety hazard. That was a real problem. And so it became Venetian law to limit the height of these shoes to three inches. <laughs> And although this was a law, it was commonly ignored. They were like, no, if I want 20 inch choppings, I'm going to have my 20 inch choppings. Like, leave me alone. I'm literally a wealthy woman and you can't tell me what to do. Leave me alone. I don't want to hear it. So, although choppings were a weird fashion trend, I think this next one really takes the cake. This trend was popular for hundreds of years in Japan and it reached its height of popularity from the 10th to the 19th century. So a very long time. Originally called ohagiro, the trend consisted of women dyeing their teeth using iron filings and vinegar. This would give them the look of having black teeth. Black teeth were not only the standard of beauty, but they were also considered a pinnacle of health because they had a coating effect that would protect the enamel of the tooth. Now, this trend was so integral in Japanese culture that it was often written about even in stories and just different texts. But the first text that it was ever written in is believed to be a story called Mushi Mexuro Himajimi, which relates in English to the lady who loved insects. Literally, ew. Could never be me. Could never be me. This story is about a young woman who defied social norms and lacked beauty, lacked grace, lacked social tact. And as you can probably guess from the title of the story, she had a particular fascination with insects. <laughs> She would often study and even befriend them by naming them and giving them personalities. This was alarming to her family. Now, women were just meant to be wives. Like, women were supposed to just be wives and at the most like poetry or fashion, okay? You weren't supposed to want to study things. That didn't even make sense. You're a woman. Like, get in the kitchen. Being interested in insects wasn't the only thing odd about this girl. She also had the audacity of putting her hair behind her ears, not plucking her eyebrows, and not blackening her teeth. <laughs> Nobody wants to see your earlobes. Put them away. Put them dogs away. Most of the story is about men scrutinizing her and her family being embarrassed of her due to her odd behavior, unladylike interests, and lack of care for her physical appearance. 
Throughout the story, she handles this really well as she refuses to do anything she doesn't want to do, and she simply looks at people who judge her as simple-minded. She's literally the definition of that girl. If you look up that girl, she pops up because honey that is like ahead of her time i would probably just cave so this next trend was basically a subset of another trend that was so popular you've almost definitely seen it in movies or tv shows or history books this next trend is an extension from the infamous powdered wig but it wasn't just simply a powdered wig it was a specific style of powdered wig called a caged wig popular in the 18th century caged wigs were pretty self-explanatory they were wigs that were wrapped around a cage to help them achieve a certain stature that was often grandiose and bulbous. Basically, they wanted to defy gravity. This trend was eventually worn by men and women, but in the beginning, it was solely worn by men. It was a masculine thing. This is why gender specifics are dumb, because nowadays a man wears a wig and it's weird, but back then it was literally only meant for men and they actually were the inventors of the wigs, so now what? This wigged trend, get it? Like, wicked, but wig? No! Anyways, it actually was started by the rise of syphilis. Who says STDs haven't done anything for us? Syphilis caused hair loss that would span from minor bald head patches to a completely bald head. And the people of the 18th century didn't help themselves much here because in efforts to cure the disease, they would often take mercury, but this made it worse and would cause further damage to the body. Because of this, one king named Louis XIV of France began wearing a flowing wig. This is what set the trend throughout Europe. Like I said, this was a men's fashion thing. This was for the boys club. But then Marie Antoinette showed up to the party in a wig and all of the girls were gagged. They were like, wait a minute, she might have done something here. She looks so good and <laughs> From then on out, they were like, move to the side, men. We have it from here. Like, we have it from here. Like, it's ours now. Wig fashion started to get... <laughs> Wig fashion started to get absolutely out of hand, and they just kept getting taller and taller and wider and wider, and they would decorate it with little bows and rhinestones and anything they could get their hands on. <laughs> These wigs were so popular and so sought after that they actually created a whole new line of work. And no, I'm not talking about wig making, I'm talking about wig snatching. <laughs> they were snatching wigs. I didn't realize getting your wig snatched dated all the way back to the 18th century. <laughs> wig snatching is primal. Wig snatchers who would take wigs and sell them for cheaper became a prominent issue in wealthy society. Imagine walking along a nice Sunday morning and BOOM! Wig gone. Now, these wig snatchers would conduct elaborate schemes, okay? It was no joke, they took their job very seriously. I thought it would be fun to create a game of two truths, one lie with these wig snatchers and the most common schemes. So I'm going to say three schemes and two are true, one's not true, one I pulled out of my butt. Option A, they would train monkeys to dangle in trees or sit on high walls and wait for an unassuming fashion forward elite in a periwig to pass by just to rip the wig from them and swing away. Option B, a man would start beef with a wigged social light to distract them and then another man or young boy would come up behind them and snatch that wig. Once the wig was snatched, the person would toss the wig to a dog and it would run away. Option C, they would carry around a dog in a basket with a blanket to cover it. And when a wig wearer would pass by, the person carrying the dog would give a signal and the dog would jump out, grab the wig and run away. I'll give you a second to choose one of the answers.
Literally hurry up. <laughs> oh my god, like, are you done yet? Don't have all day. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't chose by now, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe get therapy for being indecisive. I don't know. The option was C. The lie was C. That was the lie, okay? But the funny thing is, is that this was barely a lie. That was also a scheme, but instead of it being a dog, it was usually a little boy. <laughs> This trend eventually died down when commoners started participating and the rich people were like, literally, ew, never mind. This next trend was short lived, although it really made strides in the fashion scene. Or maybe lack thereof, because we're talking about the hovel skirt. The hobble skirt was most popular in 1908 through 1914 and originated in France. The origin story for this garment is nothing short of interesting. The hobble skirt was low-key started all because of the infamous Wright brothers. <laughs> In 1908, the Wright brothers were demonstrating in Le Mans, France, where a woman with the name of Edith Ogilby Berg, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, I think that's how you pronounce it, but she asked to ride passenger. Wilbur Wright said, of course I got you, like, yes, that would be iconic, let's do it. But there was a problem. Edith was wearing a loose and flowy dress. Wilbert was like, um, yeah, unless you're down to like flash everyone today, it's just not gonna cut it. Like, it gets really windy up there, and you're probably going to not only flash everyone, but also quite literally be a safety concern with your bits flying all everywhere. So, we're gonna have to do something about that. This is when Wilbert came up with the genius idea to grab a rope and tie it around her legs. <laughs> wow. So this is the story of the first woman to fly passenger in an airplane, but more importantly, the beginning of the hobble skirt. <laughs> So obviously this was in the news because it was like history, like it was a huge deal, right? I mean, a woman had a rope tied around her knees. <laughs> this is when a French designer with the name Paul Puron, <laughs> Paul Poiret, I don't know, okay? He claims he saw her in the news and was inspired by the wobbly walking and he was like, that is beauty, that is grace, that is Miss United States. And this is when he created the first hobble skirt not only were these dresses giving absolutely nothing they also were letting women do absolutely nothing women could only take small little dainty woman steps so it was hard getting into cars running if you needed to picking something up if you dropped it walking upstairs etc etc not only were the skirts constricting but on top of this a new garment was invented and many women under their hobble skirts would also wear hobble garters which were like little things that you would put on each leg and it would purposefully constrict your steps even further to give you the illusion of just being dainty like they just wanted to be dainty and they wanted to take dainty little steps like is that so bad did dainty little steps hurt anybody yes the answer is yes actually not being able to do things in these dresses proved to be insanely dangerous it wasn't long before these hobble skirts became murderous yes that's right, multiple people died due to these dresses. One story took place in France. The year was 1910 and a woman wearing a hobble skirt was walking around a racetrack where one of the horses got loose and was so panicked it was running around really dramatically quick and because she couldn't run out of the way fast enough, she ended up getting trampled and meeting her demise. But one year later, in 1911, yeah, that's right, 911. Coincidence? I think not. An 18 year old. 18, she was so young. It's really sad. Her name was Ida Goth. Jothe. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Ida. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, and I couldn't find anybody talk, like, speaking her name. 
so I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean. But she was on a canal bridge while wearing, you guessed it, a hobble skirt. And she sadly tripped and fell over the railing into the water. And it wasn't actually that that ended up unaliving her. It was because she couldn't kick her feet um, because she was too constricted by the hobble skirt. So she ended up passing away due to drowning. The last one I'll be talking about today was another woman in London. She was 32 at the time and she wanted to take a walk. She just wanted to take a countryside nightly walk, but she wanted to do it in the latest fashion trend. So she decided to put on her hobble skirt and hobble around town. Sadly, while she was taking a walk, there was a stile that she needed to climb over in order to keep going. And so she was doing this, she decided to climb over the stile, and sadly she tripped, fell off the stile, and ended up breaking her leg in two different places. She was found later on with the broken leg and rushed to the hospital where they sadly had to amputate it, but it was already too late for her. She ended up passing away from heart failure due to septic poisoning. So please Please, anyone out there who maybe feels like the hobble skirt was you know super cute as we were talking about it today like anybody who was thinking like wow that's actually cute like let's bring that back let's not like there's a reason it died out um no pun intended seriously that was not meant to be a joke but there's a reason that this trend did not continue and it's because it's literally so dangerous um please do not wear hobble skirts do not wear them so that concludes the out-of-pocket fashion trends i have gathered here for us today thank you so much for watching this video if you're still here i love you i hope you guys liked hearing about some history and some silly fashion trends let me know if you have any ideas for me in the comments and hopefully i'll see you next time bye